Hello, I'm Chris. Um, welcome to lesson six. Um, in this lesson, what I will be covering is um, changing the graphic style of our game. Currently, our graphic style of our game um, all have like placeholder graphics. So um, if I just run the game, I'll just pause the video a second. Uh, currently, the graphics of our game is this really sort of crude layout where, um, you know, well, the graphic style anyway is supposed to be sort of rough drawn on, on paper and, and look like it's drawn in like a back of a, a textbook or something like that. Um, but the placeholder graphics is kind of doing the job, in fact, that like the actual game itself is pretty playable um, with without it, without too many bugs. In fact, I don't think there are any bugs at the moment. Um, well, not massive ones anyway. Um, what we're going to do is replace this uh, temporary graphics that we've got um, with the actual style of the graphics that we want for the whole game. So um, what we're going to do in order to do that is we're going to quickly look back at the presentation that I did um, with you guys at the beginning of the project. And we have this sort of pen and paper style graphics uh, theme that we're trying to copy. And this is the kind of graphics that we've got except for the line paper in the background. And this is kind of like the graphic style that we want to approach or we want to have something fairly similar to this. Um, by the end of this lesson or the, the next lesson depending on how long it takes to create some of the assets anyway the types of things that you're going to need in order to make this is you're going to need some sort of uh, lined paper um, you're going to need um, some sort hold on actually better idea let me just show you the assets i've currently got okay um hopefully i've moved my portrait picture out of the way um what you can see is I've got some line paper and it's kind of like a little bit ripped on one side. Um, the, there's two ways you can probably get this. You can probably um, download something similar from the internet or alternatively you could um, use like your camera phone and uh, put a piece of paper down uh, on like a table or something and snap it. Um, you can do the same for pretty much most of these assets like um, I've got a coffee stain which you know a fairly easy to do um, you can make your own or you can get some shapes from the internet um, we need an eraser um, this is just like a, a, a well, an image from the internet but we're going to edit it so it can look different um, then some potential wood textures um, which you're going to use to like make the desk and then any extra or additional stationary images that you want to use um, just to basically uh, make it look more like a desk on the sides all right uh, the next thing that you want to do uh, for the project is um, what basically I'm going to use is this Pixlr software, which is almost like a carbon clone of like um, Photoshop. So if you have Photoshop, then by all means use Photoshop. But not everybody on the internet has Photoshop, or or so what this is is an application within a browser. So I'm currently using Chrome. And inside of Chrome, all you have to search is uh, PIXLR, and it comes up to this site. And then when you're on the site, there's this little arrow bit down the bottom here, which you can click on. And it moves down to offering you, showing what the programs are. And then we want this uh, Pixlr editor. So when we click on this, it will launch. Um, it usually has an advert down this side, so I think that's why this is all cut off. Um, uh, but for us, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of ignore that. In fact, I may stretch the window out and see if that kind of like moves it away. All right, wonderful. So I can kind of crop it off. Yeah, so if you've got like a, um ad blocker or something like that, it will block the advert and it's pretty much what you can see on mine. Okay. All right. The first thing we want to do is we want to create ourselves a new image. So we click on this and uh, we want to name it um, BG underscore game room and this is going to be like a replacement for like where we drew the, the field or the, the rink or whatever then we want to change the presets to the resolution that we want to use for our game so I'm going to scroll down in this list and select movie 720p and then if you click on this transparent I'm pretty sure it adds like a transparent background so that so we've got something blank to start with and if you click OK on that it will open up um, all of the stuff. So I'm just going to quickly reposition these windows. Now, if you've seen Photoshop before or used Photoshop before, this should be this layout should be pretty um, similar to what you you expect. Um, most of the tools are in the same places, and the options and 
stuff inside the menus are in the same places. Now, obviously, it's slightly different, and I think it's also made by a completely different company. Um, well, I think it's, I'm not sure exactly, but I think Autodesk owns this application. Um, so it's, it's owned by a respectable company. Anyway, you can look that up if you want to, but that's not that's beside the point. All right, so we've got this this room. Um, what we want to do is we want to zoom out of it a little bit, or I'm going to zoom out of it a little bit because I think I'm a little bit too close to it. So I'm going to go to view, zoom out just so I can see the whole of the entirety of what I'm working with. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to um, open up the, the next image. So I'm just going to do that off the video. OK, um, all I did was let me just do that again because I, I thought it was going to be a little more tricky than that. OK, go to uh, file, open image, and then it jumped to my folder anyway, where I had it previously saved. And what you want to do is you want to select on either of your wood textures. So I'm going to use this one. I think it's probably the better one. It looks more like a desk. And I'm going to click open. And it opens in a different window, which is completely fine for us. Um, what we want to do is with this window, if you hold down the buttons control and the A key, um, it will select all. And just to find out if I can see that in the menu, just in case... Um, all right, yeah, so edit, select all, it says control A, that's fine. So I selected everything in the window, and then I'm going to go to edit, copy, which you can also do with the shortcut keys, it should work, and then go back to your game room and do control V. And what it's done is it's pasted that texture onto a new layer. So this is our original layer with our transparency, and then this is our new layer with our, um, well, basically the word texture. All right, um, because it's inside of a web browser, some some of the shortcut keys don't work quite well, yeah? So some of them I'll do manually and some of them I'll just tell you the shortcuts. So for this one, uh, which would be normally Control T inside of Photoshop, inside of this, um, you have to go through the menu. So you go to edit and then go to free transform. I'm just gonna transform this a little bit because it came in a little bit too big for me. Uh, so I just want to shrink it down so it's like a bit of a nicer bit. And then you just sort of position it until you get the wood grain the way you like it. And then hit enter and then it sets it. So this is what I want. All right. For me, this wood texture is just like a backdrop, something to put the paper onto to make it look a bit more realistic. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to my next um, import. Um, just to sort of save a bit of space. Um, or with the application. I'm just going to go to my wood uh, texture that I had, which I copied from, and close it because I don't need that open anymore. So all I want is my game room. Then I'm going to go to File, Open Image, and I'm going to select the paper this time. And Open. And you can see it's kind of selected the paper fine. All right. With this paper itself, so maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Hopefully that will be all right. Okay, so I maximized it. I just want to zoom in a little bit. You can see that on this paper, um, you can see that it's got a white background. And this is kind of not very useful for us because we want to basically want to have an alpha channel on it. So I'm going to go to my magic wand tool in the tool section. And it kind of looks like a stick with a spell on the end. And I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click into this white area here. And it's going to select all of the white stuff that goes all around the outside of a piece of paper. Then I'm going to push the delete key and it's going to delete all of that out or should do. Ah, it's what it's got. Why it didn't do that? Because, well, first of all, I was paying attention. Second of all, um, in the layer section, um, it has this background bit, which is the only layer. And it has this lock icon. If you double click on the lock icon, it, it removes it. So basically, you can edit the image now and then try to delete again and it removes it. And you can see you've got only an alpha channel there in the background, which is that checker. Then if you do, if you hold down the controls, if you hold down control and D keys, or it might be in here actually. Yeah. Uh, deselect all, which deselects, gets rid of your selection, which is useful. And then I want to click on to the first hole punch, which I've got, and then hit delete. Then the second one, and then hit delete. And then the third one, and then finally hit delete. And then do control and D again, and it, and it deselects everything. All right. 
Then the next thing is to do control A again, which selects all. So that's in here, select all, and it's got the whole image selected again, which is useful. And then do control C for copy, which is in here. I probably shouldn't have to go through these. So copy and paste like in there. So I've got that one copied. And I think I can minimize it, can I? Oh, I can switch between. That's really good. All right, so back to my um, desktop, my desk again. And then do control V and you can paste the paper in there. All right. If you change to the tool in here, I think it's the select tool. I can't really remember. Oh, the move tool. Then you can move the paper around, but it doesn't really help us because the paper is orientated in the wrong way. And we want to, or we want it to be horizontal. So the next thing we need to do, need to do, making sure that you're on the correct layer, which is this paper layer. Go to edit, and then go to free transform, and with this, move your mouse to um, one of the corners, and you can see the difference, right? If I'm close, if I'm on the corner, I get this. Uh, two-way arrow which is kind of like I don't know, pointing like this uh, I don't know how well you can see that okay well let's just say it's pointing like this and what we want is that we want the arrow that kind of is like a coil which is like next to it and rotate it around um, for me I want the margin of the paper at the bottom of the screen and uh, this is kind of where I'm going to write the score thing because it kind of is quite useful and then I got it roughly in the right place and then if you hold down the shift key and the scale, so if you basically grab it on a corner, but before you click there, hold down the shift key and click, it scales up uniformly. So it scales up without like warping it massively. And you want to get it roughly in the right position. I think that's fine. All right. And then because it's a computer game and I want it to be a little bit wider, I don't want it to be the, the full length of this because it will look really w weird. But you can scale it up a little bit, yeah. So I just scale it up a tad, maybe a little tiny bit more, uh, and that's fine. All right, and I want it so that it's not quite touching any of the edges. Um, so I'm going to hit enter to set it, and then I'm just going to make sure that there's at least a tiny bit of a border around it, yeah. So you can see some wood all the way around it. All right. The other thing that you could do with the free transform, which is totally up to you, is you could slightly skew it a little bit. Not skew it, I mean sort of shift it so it's instead of it being flat across the top, it's slightly angled. Um, just as long as it's not cutting off anything, yeah? And this will give the illusion that the piece of paper is not quite straight on the on the, on the the desk, which is pretty reasonable. Okay, so I've got the piece of paper on there, and I've got the layout how I want it. The next thing I want to do is I want to put like a sort of fake shadow behind it. Um, admittedly, this is slightly easier to do in Photoshop because the tools are a bit more support it. But as I'm doing it in here, I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. All right. So once you go to into the layers section here and then click this piece of paper with the um, corner folded over, which is a new layer, which is something that we can edit on. And then go back to the layer before, which is the one with the piece of paper, which you can see if you turn off this tick on and off, you can see it's that one. And then hold down the control key and then make sure you click on the little icon preview in the layer section. And what that will do is it will select all the pixels on that layer, which is pretty much the entire piece of paper. Then we want to make sure that we click on the next on the layer above, which is the blank layer that we just added. So we're not editing anything on this layer. We're just we're going straight onto the new layer that we've created. Um, get, get the paint bucket tool from the side and click on that. And then because it's already got the black color, that's fine for us. Uh, fill it in black. Yeah. Um, once you've done that, do Control D to deselect what what we currently had selection, and you can move your mouse back to the normal mouse mouse at the top. Of this move tool, which is quite useful. And then what we're going to do is. Um, we're going to do, yeah, we're going to leave it on this bit for a minute. We on this layer, this black layer uh, piece of paper that we've just generated. We're going to go to filter and then going to go to Gaussian blur, and we're just going to leave this to its settings of um, 50 and click OK. And then we're going to shift this layer down below the piece of paper. So I think it's we probably move it that way around. 
Yeah, so basically it goes this, this piece of paper and then the, the layers underneath it. And then on this layer, which we've basically just made with the blurred, blurred like um, thing, um, you can already see it's slightly got a shadow effect on it, but we just want to make it a little bit more intense. So we're going to have this layer selected. And as long as you've got no selection, if you go to uh, the free transformation tool, which is the one we've been using before, and then just slightly scale it up a little bit, um, just, tiny, just a tiny bit. Like this and then if you hit enter you can sort of see it bleeding out a little bit and then making sure it's still on that layer you can use the arrow keys I think and you can sort of like nudge it so you can see like I'm hitting the arrow keys you probably hear it even and just pull it so that um, it's like you have a piece of paper yeah and then the shadow is slightly a bit off to the bottom yeah like the lights hitting it from this way and then the shadows casting down that way yeah so if you move it slightly over, you can see that it's it's sort of bleeding out a little bit. And then after that, um, in this layers section, you've got these this thing which looks like kind of two crossfaders, yeah. And it's got the toggle settings, um, and you click on that, and it's got the opacity, which is how how strong the shadow is. And we want to just drop it down a little bit, yeah, because uh, we still want the shadow to be strong enough, but we don't want it to be too strong. We want to still have the shadow, but you can see through to the wood, yeah, um, which is kind of what we want. And I might drop it a little bit further because I think I'm quite zoomed out, so I can't really see it very well. So I zoom in a little bit. Uh, you can sort of see this soft shadow underneath it, which kind of makes it look a lot more realistic. And I can just close that again. All right, and you can sort of see... If, what I've got at the top here is I've got the piece of paper, then I've got the shadow underneath it, and then I've got the piece of wood. And if you just turn the shadow on and off, you can see the difference it actually makes. So this is without it, and it kind of looks flat and nothing's really going on. And then with it on, you can kind of see like it almost looks like it looks more realistic, basically. And that's what we want. So we've got like a more realistic background. And let's see if I can zoom out. Apparently the mouse wheel works, which is not what I wasn't expecting to happen. Um, how can I zoom out this completely? All right, that's more or less fine. Actually, go back in. All right, yeah, I've got the world's most dodgiest mouse wheel, so I may have to just zoom in manually. Can I move these over more? Wonderful. All right, I'm pretty sure my face is probably covering up this history panel, but it's not that that useful really. Well, I mean it's useful, but it's not essential. Okay. Um, we haven't we're not going to be using it anyway right the next thing that we want to do is we want to start drawing our fields so let's have a look at our game from before so this is our game and then this is our game field let me open it in this room section it might be easier to see or not anyway yeah so we can sort of see our rough layout that we drew um wow this was bad okay so we're going to make this this new one a lot more nicer so going to go to the pencil tool and click on that. And then in the size section up here, we're going to change this to a three. Um, I've experimented with it before and it seems to be quite a nice um, size for messing around. Um, then you've got um, all these different sketchy things. And then before we actually draw anything, just want to click on the top layer and then click a new layer. So we've got like a drawing layer over the top so I can double click on this and just do draw layer just so that we know that is that going to work all right yeah draw layer um just not sure i spelled that right anyway um yeah so we've got this pencil tool and we're on our new layer and what you can do is you can sort of test out how it draws so sketchy is quite cool plain is just a normal regular line uh, trails gives you some cool stuff uh, then you've got shaded, oops, sticky, not shaded, shaded, so that kind of varies on what you can get out of it. Um, sticky looks like this with sticks on it, like like sketchy sort of thing. Um, then you've got ink, which is kind of like a felt tip pen, yeah, which is completely up to you what ones you want to use. I think I'm probably going to go back to the original. 
it's a sketchy, let's just check that again. Nah, sketchy's kind of rubbish. All right, yeah, I'm going to use the, the ink. All right, so with this layer that I've currently got, I think I can erase this. So click the eraser tool, probably make it bigger because it's quite small. Um, 200, how big is that? Okay, wonderful. I'm just going to clear all that rubbish off here. Okay, back to my pencil, and I'm going to change my color. And I want to make it look like maybe somebody's drawn this in Baro, so I'm going to select a good color. All right, just so you can see how I did that, there's a color swatch down here. If you click on that, it opens up this color wheel, and I'm sure it's got all sorts of ma magical color stuff that you can use. Um, so all I did was I moved the color wheel around to roughly the right color, and then in the box you got the shading option, so you can kind of get like a nice inky color. All right, when drawing out this field, um, you just want to draw the two horizontal lines first, yeah? So one, that's probably quite crap. Do control Z just so you get like the actual line that you weigh, the way you want it, yeah? And then the other one, I want to draw just up a bit from the margin because I want a little bit of space down here so I can do the scoreboard. So I'm going to go across again. All right, and you can kind of see that it looks fairly all right. I mean, you can experiment more with the drawing tools if you want to, to get a better result, like that was rubbish. Um, it can be quite difficult to draw with the mouse, so I'm not going to lie. And maybe I'm going to touch that bit up a bit. Then roughly work out where the center is, uh, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You can kind of redo it again. Yep, that's not perfect. I think it may be one line over. That's fairly all right. Then try, try and quarter it. Uh, right. Then you want to draw the goal mouths, and these have to be kind of as precise as possible. So they kind of match up so that the game's fair at least. Right, and then you have the central spot, which is my favorite thing to draw because it's so difficult sometimes. Wow, that's probably the best I've ever drawn it. Then you've got the center cross, which is where the puck starts. That's not so bad either. All right, then I'm going to add a new layer and I want to draw where I have the score bit goes. And I'm probably going to draw that in a different color. Uh, what color can it go? Red, maybe. Yeah, that looks fine, I guess. Right, so I got my score in there. And you can see that I cut myself off before I went into the, the hole there, and that's kind of what I wanted to do because I don't want to really get ink on the table. And the bit that you can see, screw up all that a little bit. Um, where's the grab tool? Does that work? All right, yeah, so I came out of the hole a little bit there. I just want to clean that up. Uh, so I'm going to use my eraser tool. Wow, that's big. I'm going to make it smaller. That's probably better. All right, I'm rushing mine a little bit because I'm doing the video and I kind of want to cover a little bit more. But for you guys, you can go a little bit slower if you want to. Or take your time to get it a little bit better than mine because mine seems to be a bit rubbish. And I'm going to zoom out. Well, actually, zoom out to actual size. That's better. And then zoom out a bit more. Zoom out. Zoom out. Okay. Right, so I've got my field how I want it, and for me, I feel that the paper is potentially a little bit too clean, and I want to mess it up a little bit. Um, so what you can do is um, get like stains or rips or something like that and mess around with it a little bit. So I'm going to show you how to put like a coffee stain onto it, and then you guys can sort of go nuts and have, have as many as you like on it or the other things you want. So in this section here, I'm going to use this coffee stain. So I'm going to open that file, um, open image, grab my coffee stain, 
okay and then obviously I'm going to clean this up a little bit so first of all I'm gonna um, I think I've got my layer locked have I yeah unlock my layer and use the magic wand tool again and delete all of the stuff that I don't want and then that's cool then I'm gonna do a selection or I could do control A it doesn't really matter control C and I'm going to swap back to my previous thing which is my actual game level part there we go and I'm going to do control V oops that didn't work why didn't that work go away delete that layer try that again coffee stain on that layer control A control C back to the previous one control V wonderful and then obviously this looks rubbish so far so I'm just going to transform it down to the place that I want it transform if you hold down shift and you grab a corner it will transform in scale which is kind of what we want and then I'm going to try and quickly work out how big a cup size is uh, hold on let's grab a piece of paper all right so this is a piece of A4 paper which is what how big they are in, in England and I'm just going to pause this video and grab a cup. All right, so this is probably a bit outside the means, but I've got my wonderful Queen's Park Rangers cup with my name on it, which is Christopher. And then I've got my piece of paper. And if you kind of put your piece of paper over your cup over the piece of paper, you can roughly work out how big a cup would be. Um, the only reason I'm saying this is kind of because um, it would look really ridiculous if say your coffee stain was like this big because how big is your piece of paper or if you made your coffee stain like super small like this it would kind of be like yeah you've got a shot glass on there or something so kind of want to just scale it out a little bit so it looks more realistic and then kind of put it so that it's not all of it is completely over um, like like the paper yeah and you can put it so it's a fraction off as well. So I'm going to put one here. Oops, I'm moving the pivot point. Enter. I'm just going to duplicate it one more time. So right click on it and duplicate layer. And then slide it over. And it's, oh, let's cut it off a little bit. That's weird. Um, control. Actually, yeah. Let's transform that one and rotate that one. Um, where that go? I can go there. And it's totally up to you where you put them. I'm going to put that one there. All right. With these layers, uh, they look rubbish at the moment because they don't look particularly realistic. So I'm just going to turn this second one off that I've made and go back to the first one, which is this one. I call it stain one. Okay. And let's save that. Okay. On this. Um, what we want to do is we want to add a layer blend to it and I think it's this button with the circle add a mask no layer styles no this one oh yeah it's the one with the toggles the one we opened up before and you've got modes and you've got like a list of different modes that you can shuffle through and you can just click on it and you can just push the down arrow usually will that let me work it nope it won't let me work it wonderful yeah, and you want to just shuffle through until you find something that's useful. I think probably the best one is either multiply or overlay. So overlay is that one. Multiply is that one, which, yeah, multiply looks wicked because it, you can see a little stain on the wood. And then as you can see, it goes over the top of the paper. It kind of interacts with the paper. Um, then with the opacity, you want to just drop it down a tiny bit. All right. The other thing I want to do with this coffee stain while I've got it here is I want to make it look like the uh, wood has sort of shifted a little bit, yeah? Well, not the wood, the, like the paper may have shifted. So I'm going to grab this part portion up here and I'm going to control X, which is cut, and then control V, which is paste, and I'm going to grab it again. And instead of put it right back in this original position, I'm just going to shift it up a little bit. So like it looks like it's fragmented a little bit. Then on this new part, I'm going to go back to, I think it was overlay, wasn't it? 
no, multiply. I'm always wrong with those. Multiply. And then it looks kind of like the coffee stains here and the paper's moved a little bit. And I'm just going to rub that bit out as well over there. Because I've left that bit there. Oh, it's on the wrong layer. Wonderful. Get rid of this. Not that one. That one. Not there, there. Wonderful. You see that's a bit shifted over. And I'm going to go back to this one. We'll have sort of hidden. Bring that back. And I'm going to quickly do the same. This one. And it was multiply. Yeah, multiply. Wonderful. And I'm just going to clean up these edges here really crudely. All right, and then you can see they've got some coffee stains over the top of it, and you can mess around with them. In fact, I might wipe this off a little bit here. A little bit freehand, so it's not identical. So yeah, there we go. So we've got the coffee stains over the top. We've got a crudely written score bit on there, which you can basically change if you want to. Um, the good bit about doing this is everything after the piece of paper, wherever I can find it. Uh, I think this is the piece of paper. So everything after this, you can basically turn off and turn on. So what that means is you can probably possibly rescale it up if you want to make it slightly bigger or, or shrink it down if you want to. Or alternatively, you could... If you wanted to have like a second level and you wanted to use the same piece of paper, then you can turn this off and then redraw it all on. Okay, this almost concludes what we've done. So, if, um, on this empty section here, it's up to you. You can put like pens or pieces of paper clips or sharpeners or other kind of stationary stuff into here just to fill it up to make it look a bit pretty. Um, that's possibly what I'm going to do, but for now, I'm going to save this as this. So, file and I'm going to go to save and it asks you to save it yeah and it asks you for the quality and what you want so i'm going to set select png because i much prefer pngs and go okay and then it asks me where to save it and i'm going to save it directly into this uh, air hockey resources folder and click save all right um once i've done that i think i can import that into game maker so let me just do that so this is my game maker. I'm just going to make sure everything's on the right screen. Wonderful. Close that. Um, go to backgrounds. Create background. New background. So BG underscore um, background, I guess. I don't know. Game screen two. And I'm going to load it in. So load. Got to find where I've saved it to, which is probably the desktop. And I'm going to find my awesome air hockey stuff. Hey. Come on. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, select my background and do open. And then it's imported into the game. And then you can go to your game room itself and change your background so background game screen 2 obviously it's totally going to mess up all of your um like your layout and stuff and you'll have to resize everything uh, to fit but it it is basically your new layout okay all right i'm going to stop the video there and i'm going to do another video after this which is going to be making like um the puck and the erasers and the, basically the other stuff that's supposed to be on here all right and that, thank you for uh, paying attention and hopefully you can either do this in Photoshop, GIMP or Pixel Art, which is totally up to you. But I'm going to make a habit of using like the free applications um, so that you guys can kind of follow along easier. Okay, thank you.